So over the weekend, John Oliver was on with Stephen Colbert. I, first off, how much unfunny can you fit in a room? Well, they well, try. Apparently all of it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you tell jokes like a girl. Yes, you scratch each other. And Unfunny seems to congregate there. So uh, they were talking about how comedians are no longer in absolute despair now that Trump... And this is something I don't understand. Now that Trump is out of office, because first off, I remember when conservatives thought, oh, when Trump is office, we won't have anything to make fun of anymore like Barack yeah. Obama. And I never felt that way because I knew that the media, the entertainment industry establishment, they were really... The, they were the enemy. They were the people, right? They were the establishment who we were railing against, not yeah. who's in the White House. And of course, now, can't stand former Vice President Joe Biden, but I'm not in despair. So I don't understand how John Oliver and Stephen Colbert don't acknowledge that Trump was a gift for them comedically because they can't write yeah. without Trump in office. Every story was Trump. Right. Was and for proof that they can't write, watch their show today. And then notice the only clips that get any kind of play is when they reference Trump. Yeah, or they Joe Rogan. still only use Trump. Right. That's all they've done, they've made fun of Trump for the last year. Because all they can do is push propaganda for uh, former Vice President Joe Biden. So here's John Oliver saying he's no longer in absolute despair now that Trump's out of office with Unfunny Colbert. How has the, doing the show felt during this administration as opposed to the last one? Because certainly I feel a great difference in my... In, in my yeah. daily focus. It's much, it's much more fun to do, right? It's, some, yeah. there's, it's not fun writing comedy from absolute despair. Uh, and, and, and for us, it's been, it was so much, even we were getting, our show <laughs> was getting sucked into dealing with the fire hose of what was coming out of the administration all the time. So it is nice to return to do what we do best, I think, which is stories about pace loans. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. I know they're English, so they don't pronounce their R's. And so. Right. What did he just say? Can we rewind uh, that and yes. see what he just said in that last part? Check. It is nice to return to do what we do best, I think, which is stories about pace loans. <laughs> stories about pace loans. Hey, uh, you know what? Control. Pace loans. <laughs> uh, that smiles like rat toy. Can we, uh, control room, can we figure out exactly, can, let's get, let's find out what he said here. He, yeah, let's. Uh, Tokenawa, what do you got? What did he say? Uh, nothing, Stephen. Okay. All right. I didn't understand that either. Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll cover it tomorrow. John Oliver, he did a whole segment on critical race theory. We'll cover that tomorrow. Oh, hmm. What do you, what do you still, oh, are you still looking <laughs> on your phone trying to figure it out? It, it, just, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist? No. Did he say pace loans? I don't know what that is. Pace loans. Pace loans. We pronounce it properly. It's all alphabet. Really? No. How do you, how do you say R? Ah, uh, mm. are you hurt? <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it is rough. Well, one, you, you don't write comedy from absolute despair. No. You write it from looking back on it. Right. <laughs> you know, tragedy plus time. Right now, I would call it the tragedy. Yes. <laughs> if you, I'm just judging by, you know, bank accounts, jobs, you know, whatever. Yeah. whatever. Bank account, employment. You know, employment, you know I mean, if you're right. looking at it that way. Right. You know, but. <laughs> Unbelievable debt. Yes. Pete Buttkick has a job in government. Right. There's a. Uh, uh, you know, hashtag blackface Hitler. Right. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, no, I understand. But that's not actually. make a strong despair. case. Yeah. No, and, you know, there's Mostly a false. war about to break out, yeah. not only just between two guys on TV, but, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> not too concerned, though. They'll just scratch each other like girls. No, it's fine. Uh, and we'll, and with the, he has a critical race theory segment, John Oliver, yeah. that just went up. To, we're going to do a rebuttal to that tomorrow because yeah. everything this guy, and I think John Oliver can be funny, but at what point, and please, you guys can comment, at what point, does comedy become propaganda? Look, and it's not lost on me uh, that I have a point of view, but I'm very open about it. And we try to let you know, you know, all references are available at ladderwithcrowder.com. We provide those in the description. I think it's pretty easy to tell when you see a Patch Adams penis doctor sketch or Dave and I making a, a, a joke about uh, men fighting in the Ukraine scratching yes. like girls, although that's actually, that actually happened. It did. Um, so did the Patch Adams sketch. <laughs> Allegedly. That happened. So that was a real, that's a real doctor. Yeah, he's, a, he's an MD, well, so technically if you want to get, you know, none of it, but, but you know. He's as accurate as many doctors have been. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Laughter is the best meta, and ooh, he's dead. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, 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 no. So, I don't know, when does it become propaganda? Watch Louder with Crowder live, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.